Like with the prose passage, in order to clarify the process of how you answer certain questions, we're not going to go over the questions in order. Instead, we are again going to go over them in groups by how you approach answering the question. So the first group of questions is the kind where, after you read the question, you can answer it in your own words before you look at the answer choices. Once you have answered using your brain voice, then you find the choice that matches your version of the answer. Now for the second group of questions. These are the kind where you think you may know the answer if you saw it. So you're going to go through the answer choices first. Even if you think you might have to go back to the passage, you're still going to look at the answer choices before deciding about returning to the passage. Okay, let's start with number one. According to the first paragraph of the passage, what might be a facet of the aquatic insect life cycle that would surprise people? Now, the word surprise should make an alarm bell go off in your head. Maybe as you look through the answer choices, you will remember when you see it what it is that's supposed to be surprising. So looking through the answer choices, choice A, all insects in the world are actually aquatic insects. That seems wrong. All insects are not aquatic. In fact, you want to be wary of any answer with all, only, or never. These are usually wrong. Okay, let's look at choice B. Aquatic insects are generally pests for humans. Well, this is not something that the passage talks about at all, really. So this doesn't seem right. How about choice C? Aquatic insects possess wings, but don't actually fly. Well, this is wrong because the passage talks quite a bit about insects flying. So this leaves us with choice D. Flying insects that are often observed are not in their dominant life stage. Now, maybe this is going to trigger a memory from the passage about how flying is the shortest stage of an aquatic insect's life. But even if a memory is not triggered, you do not need to go back to the passage. I know how tempting it is to return to the passage for confirmation, but you really want to return to the passage only when you have no idea what the answer is or you're still trying to decide between answer choices. In this case, the time it would take for you to return to the passage to confirm can be better spent answering other questions. So you pick D and you move on. All right, great job. So again, what are you going to take with you as you move forward to the next passage in reading comprehension? Well, you want to remember the best practice makes plain or clear the process that you will follow. So let's think about it. What are you already doing that is effective and efficient? What changes do you need to make? Do you need to change how you approach reading the passage? Or how you approach answering the questions? Remember, with each passage and questions that you complete, you are becoming more effective and more efficient. So, Let's keep paying attention to the methods and keep practicing.